Center. Crews have been searching the bank and police divers have completed a grid search of the billabong. I can't believe it's crazy like this has happened. Never thought this would happen. There's virgin other kids to stay away from the water. Everyone, stay away from the water. The boy's family says he didn't usually play in the area. The billabong filled during September's floods. The ABC's Tony Nichols is in Horsham, which is facing the state's greatest threat. Residents there have been advised to evacuate some areas. And Tony, what's the situation there now? Well, Nicole, midday does mark the time when the Wimmera River was predicted to peak. Now, whilst we can't confirm if that's the case or not, you can clearly see the deluge here all around me. Now, these are just some of the 110 homes that are predicted to flood up to the floorboards if the Wimmera gets to the 3.85 metre flood mark, which would be the one in 200 year flood event. Now, communities right across Horsham have been massively inconvenienced as a result of these floods. There's roadblocks right through this city, including the Western Highway, the main thoroughfare between Adelaide and Melbourne, which has been diverted south via Hamilton. And I believe the Deputy Premier has been speaking today. What's he had to say? Well, the Deputy Premier, Peter Ryan, is touring flood ravage Victoria at the moment. He spent some time in Horsham this morning addressing the press. He uh, spent the first part of his press conference paying tribute to the family of eight-year-old Lachlan Collins, who uh, are obviously grieving at the moment. He went on to praise SES staff and volunteers right across this state who are doing so much work to fortify the 51 country communities affected by a flood one-third of Victoria right across the state. I pay tribute to those remarkable volunteers who have done so much, who continue to do so much uh, to look after the people of Victoria right across the flood affected areas. Where would we be without these volunteers? The SES, of course, in the first instance, but so ably assisted by the CFA, uh, but they in turn by the many government agencies who are directly involved. And uh, we also have some armed forces personnel uh, who have been involved here at Horsham. And Tony, you're in Horsham, but there are other areas on alert further downstream. Certainly here in the West Nicole, the Wimmera River is surging down toward Warwick, Nabil and also Dimboola. Now SES staff from all over Victoria and South Australia and SCFA staff from Ballarat have converged on Warwick, Nabil in the last couple of days to fortify that small country town. 85 homes are expected to be inundated as soon as this evening and another 110 homes under threat. Now Warwick, Nabil has had limited warning as to this flood event this evening, hence uh, so many many staff converging on the town right now. But back here in Horsham, Horsham residents are watching by as the flood waters rise in some parts, recede in others. They've sandbagged their homes, they've done all they can. This is what some residents had to say this morning. Oh, it's just been incredible watching it come up. So um, we were here last night walking around, having a look and it's just been growing steadily and steadily. Uh, I did a ride lay around on my bike last night along the river and it's just amazing to see it come up the bridge. and. Yeah, there's a few people <laughs> a bit nervous about what can happen. It's a colossal event. It's higher than I've ever seen. And I've lived here all my life. Yeah, pretty amazing actually. A little bit frightening. We're around sort of the back here and we've got water right up to our yard. Um, lapping up the retainer wall, so yeah, it's a little bit scary. But the flood threat north of the state in Kerrang, the Loddon River is surging from Ichuka to Kerrang. Now the Campapsby has raged toward Ichuka and now it's converged with the Loddon. Now Kerrang can expect its flood peak this evening. The major threat there is a major uh, power unit uh, powered by uh, power core. The threat there is potentially that 20,000 homes could lose power in uh, Kerrang, Swan Hill and also Kahuna. So earthworks there have been going on very early urgently in the last couple of days to build two levee walls to protect that power station. And let's hope that they hold. Tony Nichols in Horsham, thank you. The Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, says that it's too early to say how the federal government will pay for the cost of reconstruction in flood-ravaged states. Rebuilding costs in Queensland are expected to run into the billions, with the federal government shouldering most of that burden. The Victorian floods will only add to that bill. The Prime Minister has announced a $1 million contribution to help kick-start a Victorian relief fund. The federal budget is due to return to surplus in 2012-13. 
but the Prime Minister won't say how that will be achieved. We are going to work through to make tough choices. Uh, obviously, it would be irresponsible of me at this stage uh, to be uh, uh, indicating to you uh, how that's all going to be done. We don't even know what the price tag is yet because we can't even know what the full flood damage is. The opposition says the government must rule out introducing a special flood tax. A new business task force will be set up to support the immediate recovery effort in Queensland. Ten business leaders from a range of industries will make up the group to be chaired by the Federal Treasurer, Wayne Swan. It's hoped the task force will help boost company donations to the state, where the clean-up will take months and cost billions of dollars. From Brisbane, Kieran McKechnie reports. As the crisis shifts to recovery mode, questions are being asked. Did we get enough warning? Could we have done better? Uh, is the was the dam release strategy the right one? The Queensland Government has commissioned an inquiry to answer those questions and more. Most importantly, how 20 people were killed and why another 12 are feared dead. If there is something that uh, we can learn from this event and use that lesson to protect people in other rapidly changing events like cyclones, then that will be a very good investment. The Premier has renewed her appeal for Australians to make an investment in the clean-up. The flood's recovery will cost the state billions of dollars. Tourism is one industry taking a direct hit. It is destroying our harvest, it is destroying our crop. In many communities the tourism industry is the lifeblood for the, for the economy and for the, for the social uh, fabric. We have to really make sure that we get our industry going again. The sector is worth $10 billion a year to the state and this is its key season. Business has simply stopped. It's the greatest damage we're taking now, not from the actual floods, but from the uh, perception that perhaps the whole of Queensland is underwater, you shouldn't go and travel too. And that is our greatest concern. The concern for the mining sector is damaged rail lines. I'm really worried about the uh, prediction uh, for the Western Line feeding into Brisbane. Uh, they're talking about it being out for three months. The Queensland Resources Council estimates the floods have cost the mining sector $2.3 billion. Many of the state's 57 coal mines are sitting idle. About 25% are yet to get back into operation. They're pumping water. And about 60% of our mines are both pumping water and producing some coal. But the Premier is confident businesses, both big and small, will recover. We can learn lessons. And when we rebuild, rebuild better. Despite her optimism, that rebuilding process will take months and even years. Kieran McKechnie, ABC News, Brisbane. There's serious concern for 600 Queensland children displaced by the flooding. Experts are warning about the psychological impact of the disaster in the worst affected areas. The education department's working around the clock so the new school year can start in just a week. But more than 90 schools have been affected. These are the bewildered children of this disaster, confused and lost, but too young to understand. <laughs> Makeshift kindies occupy children while their parents return to clean their homes. It's very hard, you know. I've only got a 14-year-old son, but my sister's got nine children. My cousin's got about seven or eight. They're being made as comfortable as possible in, in neighbours' houses and friends and relatives, but there's, nothing, there's no place like home. Schools have been destroyed. Playgrounds are a muddy mess. The stench was that bad that I, I actually became nauseated and, and, and sick. Um, and so unfortunately my little boy had to see that. Some parents are now bringing their children in to have a look. He just was devastated and said what, what happened to our school, where, you know, where can we go to school? The ground floor of this school has been completely gutted. There's still a huge amount of work to be done, but the principal here, like many others, is determined that school will start on Monday. We will be up and running. Uh, on day one. Up and running, but perhaps not here. Because there's so many classrooms affected, uh, then uh, the whole school group uh, may be relocated. 
Psychologists are warning there may be a long road to recovery for children in the worst hit areas. There will be things like intrusive thoughts, thinking about the flood when you don't want to think about the flood, or having uh, nightmares. Some children will have been deeply affected by these images. That will have an impact because you don't just have images but you've got audio as well and that can be um, extremely confronting. Memories that will last long into adulthood. Jane Margetts, ABC News.